experimental vertical takeoff and landing jet aircraft. The Ryan X-13 VertiJet was an experimental vertical takeoff and landing jet aircraft built by Ryan Aeronautical and flown in the United States in the 1950s. It became part of Teledyne in 1969, and of Northrop Grumman when the latter company purchased Ryan in 1999. Ryan built several historically and technically significant aircraft, including four innovative V, Stoll designs, but its most successful production aircraft was the Ryan Firebee line of unmanned drones used as target drones and unmanned air vehicles. In 1922, T.C. Ryan founded a flying service in San Diego that would lead to several aviation ventures bearing the Ryan name, including Ryan Airline Company founded in 1925. T.C. Ryan, whose previous companies were best known for building Charles Lindbergh's Transatlantic Spirit of St. Louis, actually had no part in building the famous aircraft. Ryan had been owner or partner in several previous companies, one of which also bore the name Ryan Aeronautical. The Spirit of St. Louis was not built by the final Ryan Aeronautical entity. The new company's first aircraft was the ST Sport Trainer, a low-wing tandem-seat monoplane with a 95-horsepower Monasco B4 Pirate Straight 4 engine. Five were built before production switched to the Ryan Street A Aerobatic with a more powerful 125-horsepower Monasco C-4 in 1935. A further improved Street A Special was built in 1936, with a supercharged 150-horsepower Monasco C-4S. In 1937 and 1938, a second civilian aircraft model was introduced, the SC Sport Coupe, or SCW with a 145 HP Warner Super Scarab radial engine. Ryan also pioneered stole techniques in its Yo-51 Dragonfly observation craft. In the immediate post-war years, Ryan diversified, including even building coffins for a short period. Ryan became involved in the missile and unmanned aircraft fields, developing the Ryan Firebee unmanned target drone, the Ryan Firebird among others, as well as a number of experimental and research aircraft. Ryan acquired a 50% stake in Continental Motors Corporation, the aircraft engine builder, in 1965. In the 1950s, Ryan was a pioneer in jet vertical flight with the X-13 VertiJet, a tail-sitting jet with a delta wing which was not used in production designs. In the early 1960s, Ryan built the XV-5 Vertifan for the U.S. Army, which used wing and nose-mounted lift vanes for V, Stoll vertical flight. Other Ryan V, Stoll designs included the VZ-3 Vertiplane and the Yo-51 Dragonfly. In 1966-67, Ryan was awarded the contract to build the digital Doppler radar system installed aboard the Apollo lunar lander. In 1968, the company was acquired by Teledyne for $128 million and a year later became a wholly owned subsidiary of that company as Teledyne Ryan. Claude Ryan retired as chairman with the Teledyne purchase. Northrop Grumman purchased Teledyne Ryan in 1999, with the products continuing to form the core of that firm's unmanned aerial vehicle efforts. The main objective of the project was to demonstrate the ability of a pure jet to vertically take off, hover, transition to horizontal forward flight, and vertically land. Just after World War II, Ryan engineers wondered whether the Ryan, U.S. Navy FR-1 Fireball, which had a thrust-to-weight ratio of 1 at low fuel quantities, would take off vertically. The United States Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics in 1947 awarded Ryan a contract, originally under the designation F-3R, to investigate the development of a vertically launched jet fighter. This was part of a program to evaluate the feasibility of submarine-based aircraft, Ryan conducted remote-controlled VTOL tethered rig tests from 1947 to 1950 and a flying rig in 1951. Ryan was awarded an Air Force contract in 1953 to develop an actual flying jet-powered VTOL aircraft, which was given the designation X-13. The craft was designed using calculations on a REAC-100, and two prototypes were ultimately built. It was just large enough to accommodate the single-place cockpit with a tilting seat and the 10,000 lbf thrust Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet. The high-mounted delta wing of the aircraft had a wingspan of only 21 feet and was capped with flat endplates. The nose of the aircraft had a hook on the underside and a short pole for gauging distance from the trailer. The hook was used to hang the VertiJet from the vertical trailer bed landing platform. After the aircraft was secured vertically, the trailer was lowered to horizontal and then used to transport the aircraft on the ground. Pitch and yaw control in hover were provided by vectored engine thrust. Roll control was provided by puffer jets mounted outboard of the wingtip endplates. The first prototype was fitted with temporary landing gear and made its first horizontal flight on December 10, 1955. 
Later, it made full horizontal to vertical attitude conversions and back again at altitude. The first prototype then had the landing gear replaced with a tail-mounted framework that held it in a vertical attitude on the ground. The second prototype, on April 11, 1957, made a vertical takeoff from the vertically raised trailer, transitioned to horizontal flight and back again. It then returned to the vertical trailer and landed by hooking the landing wire. On July 28-29, 1957, the X-13 was demonstrated in Washington, D.C. It crossed the Potomac River and landed at the Pentagon. The Air Force chose not to continue development of the Ryan X-13 Vertijet because of the lack of an operational requirement. The X-13 was designed to investigate vertical takeoff, horizontal flight transition, and return to vertical flight for landing. The first prototype of the X-13 was equipped with temporary tricycle landing gear. The X-13 was flown conventionally on December 10, 1955 to test its aerodynamic characteristics. The Vertijet was then fitted with a temporary tail-sitting rig. On May 28, 1956, it was flown from the ground in a vertical position to test its hovering qualities. The X-13 Verde jet completed its first full-cycle flight at Edwards Air Force Base, California, on April 11, 1957, when it took off vertically from its mobile trailer, angled over into a horizontal attitude, and flew for several minutes. The X-13 then transitioned to vertical flight and slowly descended back onto its trailer and landed.